Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I hope you're doing okay and keeping cool during this hot sunny weather. This week's story is from sunny Tanzania in East Africa. It's from an island just off the coast called Zanzibar Island and it has white sandy beaches and turquoise blue sea. The theme at the moment is giants and witches and monsters and ogres and trolls and today's story is about a Zimwi, which is a kind of ogre. A huge brute of a creature with very wrinkly skin and sharp teeth and long arms which dangle down and come in very handy for catching children. But before I tell you more about this week's monster, I wonder if you can decide which you think is the scariest story giant, witch, ogre, troll or monster that you've come across and why. It could be from a super great kid's story like Kibungu, the Brazilian beast of the forest, who puts animals in his sack. Or it could be Baba Yaga, the Russian witch who eats children for breakfast. Or the whistling giants who whistle in your ear and suck your blood. Have a think about which is your favourite scary character while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder who is your favourite scary character and why. Now, back to Zimwi, the scary creature from Zanzibar Island. You have to be a little bit brave to listen to this story, but I really don't think Zimwi is as scary as Baba Yaga. So if you can listen to Baba Yaga stories, you'll be fine. Now, one of the main languages spoken in Zanzibar and Tanzania is Swahili. And if you listen carefully, be a story detective, you'll hear Addy, the little girl in this story, saying Jambo to the monster. Jambo means hello in Swahili. Not sure I'd want to say hello to a Zimwi, but anyway, Jambo is how to say hello should you want to greet a Zimwi. And to start a story in Swahili, the storyteller says Hapukale or Once Upon a Time. Are you ready? Mouth open. Story jump out. Hapukale. Once a long time ago on Zanzibar Island lived three sisters, Tete, Tasha and the youngest who was Addy. Tete and Tasha loved to swim in the turquoise clear sea and run on the white sandy beaches. But Addy hadn't yet learned to swim. One sunny day, Tete and Tasha set off for the sea. Can I come? asked Addy, jumping down from a tree she was swinging from. No, Addy, you're far too little and you can't swim, they said. It's not fair, said Addy, crumpling in a heap on the dusty ground. Mummy, 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 please can I go with my big sisters to the beach? I'll be ever so good. Please, 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 please. Tete and Tasha rolled their eyes and clicked their tongues. No, Addy, you'll get in the way and we'll have to keep coming back from our swim to make sure you're OK, said Tete. And the road to the beach is long and dangerous and it'll be too hard for your little legs, added Tasha. Addy's mum felt a bit sorry for her. OK, Addy, she said, as long as you promise to be really good and do whatever your sisters say, you can go. But mum, said the two sisters, she'll get in the way. That's enough, said their mum. If you don't take your little sister with you, then none of you can go, OK? OK, OK, OK said the two older sisters and Addie hugged her mum's legs and skipped off on her first big adventure to the sea without a grown-up. 
As they walked along the path in the forest, there was so much to see. The monkeys were howling. <laughs> the parrots were screeching. Krakow, krakow, krakow. And the froggies were croaking. Chuka, chuka, chuk, chuka, chuka, chuk, chuka, chuka, chuk. And when they reached the beach, they were hot and sticky, and the two sisters ran splashing into the sea and dived into the waves. Addy played happily at the edge of the water, running back and forth as the waves ran up the beach. Suddenly, Addy spotted something silvery pink tumbling in the little waves. A shell, a shell, she shouted as she scooped it up and put it to her ear. Shh, 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 it whispered, and she felt that she could actually hear the sea singing to her. She sat down on a rock and made up a little song to sing back to her shell. Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. Addy placed her shell to dry on the rock and ran back to splash along the edge of the sea. After a long day of play, the three sisters made their way back home through the forest. Addy skipped along and started singing her little song. Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. But suddenly, she stopped singing. You know what she'd forgotten, don't you? Yes, she'd left her beautiful shell behind on a rock on the beach. My shell! I, I left it on the beach! We have to go back and get it now! No way, said Tete and Tasha together. Dinner will be ready and the sun's already going. We're not going back. You can find your shell another day. If you won't come with it, then I'll go all by myself, said Addy, stamping her foot and walking off. It was getting dark in the forest. The monkeys were howling. <laughs> the parrots were screeching. Krakow, krakow, krakow. And the froggies were croaking. Chuka, chuka, chuk, chuka, chuka, chuk, chuka, chuka, chuk. And Addy was scared. So she sang her song to stop herself from being afraid. Can you help me? Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. When she got to the beach, there, sitting on a rock, Right next to her shell was an enormous, disgusting Zimwi. His face was wrinkled like an old apple, and he was combing his greasy green hair with his long fingers. When he saw Addy, his face crinkled into a hideous smile, revealing teeth as sharp as a crocodile's. Hello, little girl. Jambo. That's a very pretty song you're singing. How can I help you? Uh, Jambo, Buana Zimwi, I've come to collect my shell. Oh, that's your shell, is it? Well, it's a very pretty shell indeed. I just decided to keep it for myself. Oh, but I found it first said Addy rather bravely. Hmm, I'll tell you what, little girl. If you sing a bit more to me, I'll let you have it, said the Zimwi, scooping the shell up in his long, dangly arms and stroking it. OK, said Addy, and she started to sing her song. Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. Ha! 
I'm a bit old and I can't hear you. Come closer, little girl, said the Zimwi. OK, Buana Zimwi. Was that a good idea? No, I think you're right. Not a good idea to get too close to a Zimwi. And she edged a little bit closer and began to sing. Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. Come closer, little girl. Come and sit next to me on my drum and sing me that pretty song one more time. And then you shall have your shell, said the Zimwee, grinning his hideous grin. And Addie tiptoed a little bit closer as the Zimwee held out the shell. Suddenly, a shadow fell over her as the Zimwee's long arms scooped her up and popped her inside his drum along with the shell. Doom, boom, bang! He stretched the skin tight across the drum once more and Addie was trapped. Aha! Uh -huh. I've got you now, my little singer. He grinned, flashing his sharp green teeth. Now and forevermore you can live in my drum and sing for my supper. Whenever I beat my drum, dum ketteke, dum ketteke, dum ketteke, dum, you must sing your pretty little song. I'll be the proud owner of the world's first singing drum, and people will travel from far and wide to hear as my pretty. Well done, Baba Zimwi, he said to himself. You are so clever. Now, Addy was super scared, but she was a brave little girl, so she didn't cry. She simply put her shell to her ear and listened to the song of the sea. Shh, shh, shh. Doom. Come, come, everyone, circle around. You are about to hear the world's first, the world's one and only singing drum. Make me some supper and I will entertain you. The Zimwi banged on his drum. Dum keteke, dum keteke, dum keteke, boom. And a little voice was heard singing. Pretty silver shell, sing to me. Like the sea, swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. The villagers were very pleased to hear this exciting magical drum, and they gave the Zimwi plenty to eat and drink. And so he went on, moving from village to village, making poor Addy sing for his supper. Meanwhile, Tete and Tasha arrived home, starving hungry and ready for their supper. Where's Addie? asked their mum, throwing up her hands. How could you have left her to walk back through that forest on her own? And she and Addie's dad and the sisters all ran back along the winding path to the beach, shouting for Addie. They searched and they searched and they searched, but there was no sign of little Addie anywhere. Meanwhile, Addie was being taken from village to village, having to sing the same old song over and over again. By day, she slept in the drum, and by night, she was allowed out to pick wild berries and coconuts from the dark, dark forest. One day, they arrived at yet another village. Circle round, circle round, circle round, shouted the Zimwi. Come and hear the world's one and only singing drum. Bring me food and drink and I will let you hear my singing drum. And suddenly, Addy heard a voice from outside the drum. What would you like to eat, Wana Zimwi? Chicken or fish? And Addy nearly jumped out of her skin. She knew that voice. It was the sweetest sound in the whole world. Her mother's voice. She was back in her own village. The Zimwi began to play. Dum keteke, dum keteke, dum keteke, boom. And she began to sing. 
a slightly different song. My pretty silver shell, the zim we stole from me. I'm stuck inside this drum. Come and help me, dum de dum. But Addie's mum was too busy cooking rice and fish. But who do you think heard the song and recognised the voice? Yes, her sisters. The instant that Tasha and Tete heard that voice, they knew. They ran to their mum and whispered, Mum, mum, it's Addie. She's stuck inside the Zimwee's drum. And Addie's mum didn't scream. She didn't panic. She didn't rage. She just walked calmly up to the Zimwee. Ah, oh, such wonderful entertainment. Thank you, Buana Zimwi. Could you fetch me some water from the river in this jug and then we can all sit down and eat? As soon as the Zimwi had lolloped off to the river with his long arms swinging by his side, Addy's father was summoned and he pulled away the skin from across the drum. There was his little girl curled up inside the drum, clutching her shell. Addy! Where have you been? said her mum, hugging her so tight she could hardly breathe. The Zimwi stole me and made me sing every night inside his drum, said Addie. Her family hurried back home and her father filled the drum with wet sand and stretched the skin tight over the drum once again. After the Zimwi had finished eating, he picked up his drum and dum ketake Doom, keteke, doom, keteke, doom. Sing, drum, sing, he ordered. He waited. Nothing happened. He banged again. Doom, keteke, doom, keteke, doom, keteke, boom. Sing, drum, sing. He watched. He waited. He listened. But no sound was heard. Only the wind laughing in the trees. The Zimwi was very embarrassed. He shuffled off, carrying his drum. When he got away some distance, he tore off the lid and realised he'd been tricked. And he was not happy. Ploof! He turned himself into an eagle and flew away across the Indian Ocean never to be seen in Addie's village again. And as for Addie, well, that night as all the grown-ups sat under the mango tree telling stories by the fire, Addie had a story of her own to share. And she even had a beautiful pink and silver shell to pass around the circle so everyone could hear the song of the sea. Can you help me? Let's go. Pretty silver shell, sing to me like the sea. Swooshy, swooshy, whooshy, splishy, splashy, singing by the sea. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, thanks very much for listening to that story. Thank you especially to all our listeners in Salt Lake City. Would you rather be a giant or a witch or an ogre or a troll or a monster or a zimwi? Do tell your grown-up and ask them which they'd rather be. Now, it's time to dig deep into our bag of happies and say some thank yous to some of you in our Super Great Kids family. A very big thanks to all of you who've been supporting us on Apple and Patreon and Ko-fi. Thanks to new Patreon members Sarah Jane and Thora, who is seven, and Elwood, who is five, from Devon. And thanks to six-year-old twins Safira and Louis from Shropshire. And hello to new Apple subscriber Amalia, who is five, from Berkeley in California. Amalia has drawn some super great pictures. Her favourite stories are The Seed, The Golden Bowl and The Lonely Giant. She's also written her very own story all about Julia the Unicorn, which she's illustrated with a fabulous picture. 
Amalia, I love all the noises you've used in your story and all the sparkly things like the dress and the turquoise jewels. So good. It's just great that you're making up your own stories. And thanks very much for Kofi donations to brothers Arthur, who is seven, and Lewis, who is four, from Dunleary in Ireland. And thanks to Caden, who is seven, from the US, and to Theodore from London, and to Natalie and her girls in the UK. Thank you very much for your donations. We rely on your donations and subscriptions to keep producing Super Great Kids stories and to pay our storytellers. If you'd like to support us, you can give a one-off payment on ko-fi.com forward slash Super Great Kids stories or for bonus stories and early access, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, which you'll find on our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. We've had some very thoughtful reviews too. Thanks this week to Dylan, who is eight from the UK. And now, to thank those of you sending in drawings. Thanks to Ines, who is four, from Lima in Peru, who has drawn an energetic and colourful picture of the magic orange tree story from Haiti. Really good, Ines. I like your round, sweet, juicy oranges and the green leaves on the tree. Well done for being brave and listening to that story. I don't think we've had a picture sent from Peru before, so that's particularly special. Thank you for sharing it. And thanks to siblings Bavana and Anish. I really like your bright and wriggly snake sister. And I particularly like the pattern and the way you've surrounded her with purple, which brings out the bright green of her skin. Thanks very much for sharing this and for your fun story joke. And Sawyer, who is 10, has drawn a magnificent whistling giant from the Native American story, How the Mosquitoes Became. I like the fact that he's all green and huge and he fills the whole page, which shows how big he is. And that his mouth is open and round, which looks like he's whistling. I'm glad you like this story. It's one of the first traditional tales I ever heard, so it's rather special to me. And seven-year-old Eliza has drawn a clever picture of the Native American story, Coyote and the Big Old Tree. I like the fact that you have a unique style, Eliza, and I love the way you've made Coyote's fur all textured and rough with your pen strokes. I think it's super great. Thanks for sharing it. And four-year-old Evan from Virginia in the United States has sent us an imaginative drawing of the story, Coyote and the Big Old Tree. In Evan's retelling of the story, Coyote is trying to eat the tree and the tree is throwing apples at him. A great idea, Evan. Thanks for sharing this. And five-year-old Van from Maryland has sent in a magical picture of the Russian tale Marusha and Father Frost. Van, I like the way you've coloured the two sisters literally blue with cold and it's clever the way you've put the huge and very good writing across the page as if Father Frost is shouting, Are you warm? Thanks very much for sharing your picture with us. And thanks to Adam who is six. He sent in an amazing picture of the Brazilian tale, The Snake Sister. Adam, I love the way you've given the sister such a vibrant, brightly coloured dress and her hair put up in a ponytail. All very stylish. And meanwhile, the poor little snake is wriggling alongside her in paler colours, destined to be forgotten and abandoned in the sea. A brilliant picture for a great story. Thank you very much. And Zuri, who is three, has drawn a magnificent crocodile picture. I love his triangular teeth and long snout. Great writing too. Well done. I wonder if you'd keep a crocodile if you found one. And six-year-old Una in Queens, New York City, has drawn a witty picture of Baba Yaga the Russian witch. I particularly like the way Baba Yaga is standing on her broomstick and looks rather pleased with herself. Thank you for sharing this, Una. I wonder if you can tell the story in your own words. And five-year-old Yukiyaki has drawn a humorous picture of Anansi and the hot pepper soup. Anansi is sitting at the table with the king and a big pile of treasure which he's hoping to win while slurping down the soup. I particularly like Anansi reaching out to eat his soup with one of his many legs. 
I also love the way you've made the pile of gold which she hopes to win so absolutely enormous. It shows the sense of fun in the story. Really good. Thank you. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. And thanks for all your pictures and messages. We love hearing from you. Bye for now. This Super Great Kids podcast was produced in Wardour Studios in London. London.